Okay, so moving on to macromolecules, you should be filling in your notes organizer. It's a little bit different than normal. It has sort of four big blocks uh, put together with one little block with the dotted lines around it. You should be filling that in as you watch this video, this portion of the video. Um, so let's start by talking about by giving the definition of macromolecules, which is right smack dab in the middle of your paper. Macromolecules are large molecules that are formed by joining smaller organic molecules together. And we're going to break down that definition so, and talk about what, what sort of each of those parts means. So macro literally means large. So we're talking about large molecules. Um, they're also known as polymers, and poly, that word part, means many. So if it's a polymer, it must be made up of many something. So what are we talking about? They're made up of a lot of, many, of monomers. And monomers are these building blocks, these smaller repeating subunits that get joined together to form the big molecule, which is the polymer, which is the macromolecule. Okay, so the monomers are building blocks. I'm going to use those terms interchangeably, so it's important that you understand what that means. So all biological macromolecules are what we call organic molecules, meaning they contain the element carbon. Carbon is key here. Um, if you have a sibling that's in college and they're set studying any sort of science, they're going to take a class called organic chemistry. It's a, it's a class that's based entirely on this atom here, carbon. It's a hard class, um, and you can see just sort of as we're going through this why that would be hard when we're learning the very basics of just a couple of macromolecules, organic molecules. So here are your four biological macromolecules. There are tons of uh, molecules, lots of large molecules, um, but in biology, in terms of li living organisms, these are the four big ones, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So for each of these, I'm going to give you four things. I'm going to give you the building block or the monomer, the function, some examples, particularly like the types of foods you would find them in, and then just some additional information. So we're going to start here with carbohydrates. So we've heard of carbs before, so let's talk about um, what makes up carbohydrates. Carbohydrates is the macromolecule, the polymer. The monomer, or the building block that gets put together um, to form a carbohydrate is called a monosaccharide. Mono meaning one. Okay, so and saccharide meaning sugar. So a monosaccharide is a very simple sugar. You can see here that here's some examples of monosaccharides. Glucose and fructose are simple sugars. So simple sugars like glucose and fructose get put together, repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated until they form a macromolecule carbohydrate, um, like cellulose or something like that, or that something that you would find in a starch like a potato or a grain. So the building blocks are these simple sugars, monosaccharides. Okay, the function of carbohydrates. Are, carbohydrates are your main source of energy. They provide you with energy. Simple sugars, like the sugars you would find in this apple here, so that would be like glucose and fructose and things like that, um, those are going to be fast-acting energy sugars. They're going to provide you with energy immediately. Complex sugars or starches are going to provide you with long lasting energy. That would be like the, the carbohydrates you would find in things like pasta. Some additional functions of carbohydrates are for structure and support, like for example the cell wall of plant cells are made up of carbohydrates that's called cellulose, that's going to provide the cell with structure and support. So if you're an office fan, if you like watching The Office, um, there's an episode where they're, they have like a 5k for to raise money for rabies, and Michael Scott, you know he's not the, the brightest light bulb, right? He uh, carbo loads right before the race. Except what he should be carbo loading on is something like an apple. And instead, he scarfs down fettuccine Alfredo right before his 5K, which of course makes him puke all over, over the place right at the very end of the race. But I mean, would it have even provided him with energy within a race in that short of time? Absolutely not. He should have been loading up on carbs like here that are going to give you fast acting energy. Okay, so examples of carbohydrates, we've talked about a few, but grains, pastas, fruits, vegetables, um, sugar, honey, potatoes, those, all, those are all foods with carbohydrates. And then make sure you include cellulose here, which like I said, makes up the plants, plant cell walls, providing structure and support. Okay, 
then some additional information for carbohydrates. Um, this is not something that you need to know, but something that you can write down. They're made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a ratio of one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms for each carbon atom. And then that little subunit here, CH2O, gets repeated over and over and over and over until they join together to make the macromolecule. Okay, terms that you do want to write down under additional info are disaccharides and polysaccharides. So a monosaccharide was a simple sugar, right, like glucose and fructose. Disaccharides are when you have two monosaccharides joined together. Di, that means two. So disaccharides would be sucrose, which is table sugar, and lactose. Polysaccharides, we already talked about what poly means, and you know saccharides mean sugars. So that means many monosaccharides join together to form your more complex sugars. This would be like your starches and your glycogen and your cellulose. Okay, so now moving on to lipids. When you hear the term lipids, you should immediately think of fats. Lipids are fats. Okay, Paula Dean here, she loves lipids. Lipids are fats, oils, and waxes. Now, lipids are sort of the exception to the rule because they don't have a true monomer. They don't have a true building block. There's not one single subunit that gets repeated over and over and over. But um, lipids are composed of fatty acids, glycerol, and other components. So make sure you write this down, no true mon monomer, but you can also write this here under building blocks. Okay, so the function of lipids is to store energy, to store energy. Um, so they also have some additional functions, like uh, we know that fats are used for insulation, like our walrus here. He's got that huge layer of fat called blubber that are going to help him stay warm even in the cold temperatures. Uh, they also prevent water loss. We know that fats lipids, they do not mix with water. We all did this experiment right here when we were in kindergarten and we mixed water with oil and we saw that, you know, they'll always stay separated from one another. So that allows organisms to prevent water loss. So your cell membrane has lipids in it so that it can control the amount of water that's going in and out of the cell. Plants have these waxy cuticle layers on the outside of the leaves so that water just sort of bounces onto the leaf and then splashes right off and they can absorb water when they need it. It's more controlled. Um, honeycomb in a beehive is full of lipids, okay, and, and that allows wa oh, you know, water to stay within the beehive. Okay, so here are some examples of lipids. Butter, of course, Paula Deen's fit most favorite lipid. Um, we have our oils, like olive oil, vegetable oil, peanut oil. Avocados are a delicious source of very good lipids. Um, waxes, including the waxes that you're going to find on the outside of plant leaves, like the, that's called the cuticle, the waxy cuticle. And then steroids are a big, very important lipid. They get sort of a bad rep, especially cholesterol, but they are very important within our bodies. And then finally, some additional information. Lipids are what's called hydrophobic. Hydro meaning water, phobic meaning fearing. Like if you have a phobia of something, you're afraid of it. So lipids are water fearing. That simply means they don't mix with water. If a lipid is solid at, a room, at room temperature, um, we call it a triglyceride. If the lipid is liquid at room temperature, we call it an oil. Okay, and then just some additional information. Uh, lipids that have only single bonds are called saturated fats. You've probably heard these terms before. Now we're learning what they mean. So saturated fats are saturated with single bonds. Lipids that have at least one double bond are called unsaturated fats. And lipids that have lots of double bonds are called polyunsaturated fats. Remember, poly means many. Okay, next up are proteins. Now, the building blocks of proteins are called amino acids. There are 20 different types of amino acids. You can see our list of amino acids here. Your body can make 10 of these 20 amino acids. So where do you think the other amino acids are going to come from if your body's not capable of making them? Of course, they have to come from our food. So those 10 amino acids that your body can't make are called essential amino acids. That is why it is so important to make sure that you eat foods with protein. That's why people who are vegetarian or vegan, they have to eat certain foods that are full of protein to ensure that they're getting enough protein because normally we would get a lot of our protein from meats. So... 
Proteins have tons of functions, but here are some big ones. They're used for structural support. They're used for building muscle. This is why people who are doing any sort of weight training, they're constantly drinking like protein shakes and things like that. They're used for communicating signals between cells. They, of course, speed up chemical reactions. We talked about how enzymes are special proteins that do this, so you need to know that enzymes are proteins. Um, and they're used for controlling cell growth. So proteins have lots of functions. Here are some foods that are full of proteins, meats, eggs, nuts, beans, fish, cheese, and milk, and then some additional proteins that you may or may not have heard of. Hemoglobin is a protein that's used for getting oxygen in your blood, and then insulin, which is of course used for maintaining the amount of glucose that you have in your blood. Those are both proteins. Some additional information. We've talked about this before. The structure of a protein determines its function. That's a key idea, especially when we're talking about enzymes. If you change the shape, you're going to change the function of a protein. Uh, proteins are made up of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and sometimes sulfur. Proteins make up about 15% of your total body mass. For example, your hair, your skin, your nails, those are all made of protein. So you've probably heard of keratin, especially you girls. You've heard of keratin. You know, take keratin. It's a protein that will make your hair nice and shiny and your nails nice and thick and beautiful. Okay, that's, that all has to do with what we're talking about here. Amino acids are held together by peptide bonds. We'll talk about that more later in the year in order to form proteins. And proteins are made by the ribosome, a special little organelle within the cell. Its whole job is making proteins. Last up, we have my favorite macromolecule, nucleic acids. Nucleic acid, N-A. I'm going to give you a hint. That's DNA and RNA. That's what it stands for. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. So these are your two nucleic acid macromolecules, DNA and RNA. The building block of nucleic acids are called nucleotides. Nucleotides are made up of three things. Make sure you write this down. They're made up of a sugar, if it's DNA, it's deoxyribose. If it's RNA, the sugar is ribose. They're made up of a phosphate, and they're made up of a nitrogen base. Those three things, a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogen base make up a nucleotide, and then you just add nucleotide plus nucleotide plus nucleotide plus nucleotide to get a nucleic acid. Okay, their function is to store and transmit genetic information. Genetics is my most favorite topic in all of biology, so do not forget that DNA and RNA are nucleic acids responsible for genetic information. Okay, we get, we've already talked about what our two examples of nucleic acids are, RNA, ribonucleic acid, and DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and we'll talk lots more about those. And then for additional information, um, they're composed of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and hydrogen atoms. And then just some big differences between the two, DNA and RNA. DNA is double-stranded, which is why it's stuck in the nucleus of cells that have a nucleus. And RNA is single-stranded, which means it can travel in and out of the nucleus because it's smaller. It can go anywhere in the cell, particularly to the ribosome, where it's going to be used to make what? To make proteins. Okay, and that covers our topic for today. Make sure you have your notes organizer filled in. Uh, go back and review any slides if you missed information. Have a great day.